member of the Back to Warcraft podcast. I am Bidu. Joined with me, of course, is Giannis, the man, the myth, the legend, Neo. What's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, how you doing today? It's uh, Tuesday, April 13th, 2021. How are you? <laughs> on uh, today, April 13th, 2021, I'm doing quite miserable, Ricky. Thanks for asking. How are you? Yeah, I feel like uh, I'm okay. Um, well, yes and no, but I feel like we should make the dates because, uh, you know, we record and sometimes things happen. Like uh, last week you had hair for the last uh, upload and people are like, wait, he doesn't have hair anymore. How old is this? But it is Tuesday, April 13th, just for uh, reference. But uh, man, how am I doing? I was doing great. A really long weekend of casting. We had uh, Dust League closing up. Uh, I was working nights that weekend so i was going to work wait uh getting home at seven in the morning wait uh seven in the morning i'd go to sleep i'd wake up at 11 in the morning get ready for production 12 o'clock we'd start and i did that saturday and sunday and it, i'm just an absolute zombie um but some really good games out of dust league and then i tweaked my back yesterday uh i was telling you about this yesterday so i literally made dinner right before the ESL Cup, which is on uh, yesterday, Monday. So we did Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, so I literally made dinner. I put it on the desk. And then I don't know what I did, but the arm movement or the hand movement just like tweaked something in my back. And I was like, oh. And then Carson's like, yo, you good? And this is like this is like 20 minutes before the broadcast. I'm like, yo, I, I can't move. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I did something to my back. And uh that was a painful cast uh, on the ESL Cup, guys. I don't know. I held it in, but I was in so much pain. And then I thought I'd sleep it off, but I'm still, I'm still in pain. So maybe I need like a chiropractor or like massage. Ooh, I don't know yeah. what's going on, but I got oh, a yeah. I got a back of like a sixty year old man. Yeah, I feel you. I'm spending a lot of time in front of my computer as well, so my back is not the best ever. I, I do get uh, some some pinches here and there. I can recommend taking a bath, Ricky. That if you have a bathtub. Just go or just take a really, really hot shower. Keep it warm. Relax a little bit. That's the most important thing. Don't stress yourself too much. Just relax a little bit, especially after three days of casting and now this day of podcast. Don't burn out on me, Ricky. I know you're you're new and young and fresh still, but it's been three months now with you at the Back to Warcraft crew and I need you for much longer. So take your breaks. It's important. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You had a bit of a break um, this weekend. What did what do what does Neo do when he's not uh, when he's not casting for like three days straight? Well, was when was my last cast? I think I took Friday off and Saturday and Sunday. Not too sure anymore. Um, mostly staying in bed and sleeping. I uh, I think I had to catch up on some sleep, and then I met a friend for some drinks, and the next day I had to spend in bed because I was very hungover and my head hurt a little bit. That was that was that was bad. But I had a good day with a friend of mine. Um, some other people than just the four roommate, uh, three roommates I have, or, or Remo, or you, or Carson. Uh, so a little bit of a switcheroo. But tell me a lot about Dust League, man. What happened at Dust League? Oh, really good games. Uh, so obviously, spoiler alert, um, if you guys haven't seen uh, the results, Foggy did win um, the whole thing, but it wasn't easy. Uh, playing against Vortex in the semifinals, that was one. That could have been easily a grand finals. Uh, really, really good games against Vortex. And then uh, in the finals, playing against Krav. Krav uh, making it through the Great Wall. I got to say, great performance from the Great Wall. When I had the top 16 and he was listed, I was... Like when you see uh, four groups of four and you could just tell on paper, well, he's out early. Um, and I got completely, completely surprised with his uh, with his human versus Night Elf. That guy could play a lot of races, man. I think he's an undead main, but he could play human. Uh, I've seen him play human in FFA, definitely in 4v4. Um, very good against Elf. He's got this aggressive style. I was very impressed by it. It also makes for entertaining games, too. So that's the key. I, I had so much fun with Dust League Europe. I'm so glad I decided to dive in. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from Dust League NA, because obviously that's where its roots are from. And I, I do like it. But man, everything was just oh, everything was just way better on Europe. <laughs> uh, I, I drank the Kool-Aid and it, it tastes good, man. I, yeah, it was good, man. The viewership was incredible. Everyone was so supportive um and the games were always good so like a group of four man i was thinking five best of threes um they were all so sick and you can catch most of those on on youtube actually almost all of them on youtube uh dust league gets uploaded there so you can check out every match i highly recommend if you're a human player watching the great wall against elf 
uh, watching him play against Sed and Neutron. Uh, amazing matches there. And then, of course, Foggy versus Vortex. Any Foggy series, incredible. This guy's playing out of his mind right now. We actually have the interview um, after the Grand Finals when he wins against Crab. So Foggy versus Crab, we talked to him a bit. I really wanted to talk to him about... Um, how he feels going against Happy, does he still feel like an underdog? And then also, you know, he's so solid, we know that. But then when he plays against like a Crab and a Side who have weird, weird ass undead styles, like does he go into it like, ah, fuck, here we go, like what's going to happen? So he just said, you know, I'm confident against whatever they do, it's just scouting. I need to make sure that I know what they're doing. And then once I know... I can uh, I can beat them because they don't play as quick as Happy, and he's like the hyperbolic time chamber. So he, he's played so much against Happy that no offense, but they they can't move as quick as him. So very nice interview, and you can catch it on YouTube as well. Um, in the Foggy versus Crab Grand Finals for Dust League, but a really great event. And uh, you know the Super League's coming up, uh, Neo. And if if this doesn't pan out with people bitching and moaning about the ping and flow. I'm okay with going back to regionals. And I definitely think that NA and EU Dust League is still very, very competitive. Okay, is this a monologue or are we doing a podcast here? <laughs> no, this is that's just my take on Dust League. Did you watch it? Did you watch any of it? I watched quite a bit here and there. Yes, indeed, I did. Uh, but I did indeed miss Fo uh, Foggy vs. Vortex. And afterwards, I was scrolling through my Twitter feed and Vortex was quite angry, I guess. I don't know about what. Was it the result? Because he said something along the lines of, fuck walker three or something yeah so he actually left the final game <laughs> without gging and we normally thought that was like a flow bug you know how if you don't if you yep. type gg and leave it it uh, doesn't go through so that's what we initially thought but no he just he did fucking leave without gging and then he messaged me and he's just like this game is horse shit you can completely outplay someone and they just have a fucking warden and they just do bullshit uh, laming and uh, with no skill. And he was totally pissed because uh, Foggy warden the fuck out of him on Terena stand. Um, and absolutely Vortex was ahead. Absolutely Vortex was crushing Foggy and then just fan and knives spam on all the acolytes over and over and over again. Level six warden with the avatar using the graveyard against Vortex for base rating and, and there was nothing that Vortex could do. And dude, if I, I'm an, as an undead player, I feel his pain. Um, but I mean, Foggy just played great, you know, and, and it's not it's not easy to lame. Um, I definitely feel for Vortex though, man. He was pissed and <laughs> rightfully so. You can catch that guy game on, on YouTube uh, and trying to stand and see uh, what's going on. But yeah, Vortex a little bit pissed off there. He has since deleted the tweet, so I guess uh, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's fine with it already. But of course, I'm the all-seeing eye. Nothing nothing escapes me here. Uh, but you think he's fine like coming back for DreamHack or is that it now? See, I don't know. I was I was talking him off the ledge a bit, you know. Um, as a TO, we get all the inside scoop. All, all the players bitch and moan to us. They they vent to us. They uh, tell us how we feel. So I was I was telling him, you know, like it sucks and I feel your pain. But you know, since he deleted that tweet, maybe cooler heads prevailed, and he said, you know what, it was just a great series, which it was. Um, you it's know, so frustrating players, even though. Whenever he's losing, it's always so close at the craziest games, I feel like. It's the same against Happy, which seems to be an obstacle that he can't overcome yet. Maybe it's the same with Foggy, or it felt like it uh, this this weekend to him. But man, we need him in the scene. He provides so many great games and such an entertaining player. He's always cool in interviews. I don't want a DreamHack season without Vortex. Yeah, no, me neither. I, I, I definitely think that he'll be playing. I don't think this is like a de Muslim fuck this, I'm out. Um, Vor Vortex, Vortex is literally one of my favorite undead players. Like, I even enjoy watching his games more than Happy, um, oh, yeah. surprisingly, because he's so solid. And Happy just has that wow factor. But Vortex, man, Vortex is just so good. Um, so yeah, I, I obviously I hope he's in DreamHack. I hope he's not discouraged from Dust League. That's not the point of this. Yeah, league. dude. If uh, you ruin Vortex uh, in Walker Three Esports, I take Dust League away from you and, and don't let you. I run can't this have on any more anymore. haters than YouTube, man. I can't have any more haters. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that'll that'll be awful. I think uh, I think he's fine though. I'm gonna talk. To, I'm gonna talk to him actually because he got me paranoid. I'm like, yo, you good? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> please, please double check on that. So, um, we got. Eight players qualified, right? And there's two more qualifiers for the Super League, uh, as far as I know. So we got Fish, Hitman, Deuce, Hunter, Craft, Vortex, Foggy, The Great Wall. Yeah, that so those eight automatically qualified. Uh, they still have to confirm whether they want to play on the flow system. 
um, for the Super League. So that'll be eight. We'll be still having 16 total. So the other eight will come from two qualifiers, three players each, and then two random invites. And I'm going to invite whoever the fuck I want to make it sweet, make it <laughs> oh spicy, make it good. I might even invite Asians if they want to do it. I'm really, I really want this thing to be cool. Um, but Can I give you an you know, advice? This, like a friendly yeah. advice, like a brotherly advice? Yeah. Don't invite Blade. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Uh, I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. And it's not because he told me to go fuck myself, despite the fact that he drunkenly didn't show up again. It's not because of that. It's not because he messaged me and said, hey, I got drunk. Sorry, I totally bailed on your tournament. Mm -hmm. But also, fuck you. Um, it's not. It's because, you know, I gave him a shot. I gave him a, a, a fair shot. You warned me. Everybody, dude, a lot of people warned me. They said, why would you invite Blade? But the truth is, like, if Blade shows up, he's exciting. And people want to see him play. Um, I took the gamble. I took the risk. I should have had a sub ready for him. I didn't. Um, but then again, I kind of like the whole like story of like he didn't show up. So here it goes. Uh, I think if you sub in, you kind of give people like excuses to keep fucking around. Okay. But, so that, um, that, that lesson is learned. Then when will you finally learn the lesson that Papa Neo is always right? Well, I mean, I in the back of my head, I knew that... <laughs> He probably won't show up. Uh, his manager actually messaged me. Caspen messaged me and said, uh, hey, did, does Blade know about the schedule? And I said, yep. And he said, okay, because he's been drinking again. And I go, well, so far, so good. And I'll be honest with you, Neo. The day of the match, I wasn't friends with him on Discord. And when you're making veto groups, you have to be friends with the person to mm -hmm. make a group. So I messaged him and said, hey, can you accept my friend request? This is six hours before the, the, the start. I said, hey, can you accept my friend request so I can add you to the groups? And he did. Huh. So he, six hours before he was there. Yeah. And you then know I know how the much beer and wine you can you can draw down in in six hours, man. That's a yeah, lot. yeah. So I make the veto groups and I go, okay, start uh, your A, your B, go ahead. And he just he just wasn't there from that. So um, I mean, fuck, man, we got so close. We got, we got <laughs> close. I don't think the Netties tournaments they got vetoes from them. So <laughs> uh, no, 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 they didn't. I was uh, I was involved. No, they didn't. As far as I know, at least not like for day one they did, but day two and day three. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, the international version of Dust League is scheduled for after DreamHack or something. June? June? Something? Yeah, we got the date here. One sec. Uh, the dates for that is... It's it's roughly... June 26th. June June 26th will be the Group A, yeah. So we'll get the qualifiers in the uh, first second week of June. And then obviously the draft. Um, and then... Uh, so and you're then rigging everything June, again. June 26th. I mean, uh, the script's been good so far. Why deviate? Why t uh, t leave it to chance when I can just write exactly so, what I want it to be? So you tell me you will invite two people that you like most, I guess, and then rig the groups as well. So the two people you invite will probably get a top seed. Can yep. you do... Okay, I was about to say, like, there's there's yep. people listening to this. You can't just nod. That doesn't oh, work. Oh, yeah, under, I was nodding. I was nodding in approval. Yep, so I'm, I, I, podcast, I, I invite whoever I want because, um, you know, qualifiers aren't very indicative of anything. Also, players that are exciting and electric don't always have time to play that Saturday-Sunday qualifier, so they miss their shot. Um, and maybe they can reschedule if they're actually in the group stage. I've always found this, you know, in season one, I let the players schedule and we cast them from replays and that was a absolute fucking nightmare. <laughs> so what I do now is I say, here are the dates. I give them to you well in advance. And I found that the players do schedule for this. If they want to play, they schedule their life around my tournament. I don't have to run around and do that for them. Um, so going back to the invites it's always just been who's playing really good who do i want to see you know like the invite for for dust league was said and i really wanted said in there he didn't play in the qualifiers and if he didn't show up then it wouldn't have been as exciting but you know the great wall with a great win but he said played dynamic and amazing throughout the entire tournament and that's why i want he beat grubby grabby in the uh war three <laughs> champions um finals tournament so uh <laughs> these are players that don't have time to play qualifiers but if they go in the group stage they will accommodate for it so um, yeah, for this invite, I still haven't decided, you know, Cruncher obviously is a dynamite player in NA. He didn't play in the last dust league. So do I invite him? Does he take one of the slots? Does he play in the qualifiers? I'm not too sure. The good um, thing is, the good thing is that we have an entire DreamHack season prior to this. So you can just wait and see what's happening at DreamHack. Who's getting people 
riled up, who's becoming the fan favorite, who's standing out in the qualifiers, and then you can just pick. Yeah, and I, I just I really just sit on my computer and just like scour replays, scour results. I check streams. I'm always watching. I'm watching everybody. So like a hawk. Aren't you just asking Carson and does whatever he says? Isn't that how <laughs> dust works? No, man. I dude, honestly, I don't ask Carson for like anything. Uh, when it You're comes sure? to like player, when it comes to player. Like, th no, that's my bread and butter, man. Like seeking talent, knowing who's on point right now, who's on, who's not. No, that that's me. Carson, Carson's like guitaring and, and maybe like, you know, oh, hitting that like high C. But for the most part, you know, Carson's kind of useless. Uh, wow. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This is not going to air well. No, no, no. Carson's <laughs> great. Um, But no, I, I find I've always just had that. Like, I love watching players play. Like, I've just that's that's my thing. I always just watch people and I, I like uh, watching how good they're getting and seeing like the, how, what level they're at now. And then, oh, it's like next week. Oh, they fucking played amazing. Like Arc, man. Arc in the ESL Cup uh, yesterday, uh, Monday ESL, the episode, uh, we are the number two cup. I guess it's number 63 for some reason. But uh, Arc played really good. He almost beat Insup. And arguably, he did some, he did that Keeper Fairy Dragons on CH, like the cheese. But okay. uh, if he just played standard, I think his standard is better than than any gimmick strat that Elf can do. So he kind of threw with just a bad strategy. But that was like the best I've seen him play since ever. I mean, and he takes these long breaks and he just comes back and plays so good. So that's the shit I like to look for. And when I'm looking for who to invite, those are the kind of stories I look for. Like this guy's playing amazing right now. I want him in my league. So it's going to be good, man. I had... Uh... You know, I always have an eye for talent as well. I was high on the Chemico train pretty early on. Uh, also, Stranic, aka Dice, I caught my eyes pretty early on. Monday in ESL Cup, I casted a game of Inspired. That dude is 16 years old, which is nuts for Warcraft 3. He's from Uzbekistan, and uh, he played very, very solid. He's a human player. He was up against Sonic in the first round, and I had a little bit of a downtime. I thought, oh, okay, this is... I either go for this game and hope that Sonic is doing something crazy uh, and funny, or I have, like, zero content on the stream. So I was diving into this one, and Inspired played really good. He was nervous as fuck, you could tell, uh, very early on, like a missed TP and stuff. But, man, that is some good foundation for Mr. Ramses. I'm I'm, wow. I'm I'm having an eye on on Ramses for Human 2021 from Uzbekistan. I've Uzbekistan. never even heard of this guy. 16 years old. Pretty That's crazy. amazing. That's good. That's what we need. Exactly. Uh, there's quite some cool developments in the scene, like the Lightning Seven team and uh, War Three Re Revive. That helps young talent. Uh, they also found Stronic slash Dice and paired them with Neutron. I hope they find a good human coach for for Inspired. It's a that's a pretty talented squad they got there. They got Flowpox as well. <sighs> Love these guys. Really, really, really cool thumbs up for them. I mean, the big, yeah, I don't think people understand like how crazy it is that Che Miko is like one of the best players in the world right now because <laughs> oh. you two Che Young was one of the worst players I've ever watched in <laughs> Zotac Cups <laughs> oh my God. for Neo for like six years. <laughs> what? Like you, you two Che Young. Is was not a good human player. Oh. Like I could have beat him. Um, and I don't know what he's not even like a young kid. He's he's twenty six. He's two years younger than me. Like I don't know what he did. I would love to have him an interview with him and just like not to shit on him, but just to say like what changed because he's fucking amazing right now. And he was literally a, a round one walkover, round two maybe. Wow. Um, but so pretty much good. like a Luna right now or like a Melody right now. Yeah, yeah, no worse, worse than a Luna wow. for sure. Um, just really bad. Like, and for a Korean, it was awkward because we would be like, "What's up?" You know, like, uh, <laughs> you shouldn't be. Man, your, your 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 name is Moon. Show some skills, finally. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But uh, yeah, I'm very impressed when he started. When he came back, and I saw Che Miko, and then Carson was like, "Yeah, he's been playing for a long time," and I was like, "Yo, is that Che Young?" And then Carson's like, "I don't know." And then I looked at the thing and it was like, oh my God, alternate IDs, U2, Chaeyoung. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah, I crazy. think 
uh, in a, like 2014 or something, there weren't too many Korean tournaments, but there were only eight players for like something like Twitch Super League and stuff. So all he had to do was like show up and got paid. And maybe that motivated him. And two years later, I think he started that flat with Soxo and, and Law Lyot. So they were all living together for at least a year, maybe two. And that's when he got crazy. Like grinding all day with the other three, living with the other three, learning from the other three. And of course, with more success comes more payment and uh, then comes more grinding and even more success. But this is really cool. This is something similar to Yumiko in 2008-ish, 7-ish. There was a time when Fly and Yumiko both joined Mouse Boards and Fly was this absolute crazy juggernaut that beat everyone in every league. And we got, okay, there's a reason why they picked up Fly. He's really, really good. And whenever Yumiko was seated in WC3L, he lost. Like, not close, not even remotely close. And there was barely any difference between seating the manager and seating Yumiko at that time. Of course, hyping and stuff that uh, paid, like, that, that took a toll on them as well. But four years later, Yumiko was top of the scene alongside TH and Infi and Fly, I guess. He was top four all of a sudden. So... Sometimes you get smashed for six, seven years straight and you still keep up the grind and at some point something clicks and you just get good. Yeah, Yumiko had that style too where he would just make towers throughout the whole map and like try to force fights at his three random guard towers like on the middle of the map. Yeah, that was when it was um, already good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're talking about before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they had the style to just lose a lot. <laughs> Thank God that got better. Yeah, no, a very exciting player. I mean, Yumiko was so good, but he was like tight with uh, TH and those two were like grinding together like hard. Oh, um, yeah. That was before TH was really like chummy with Infi too. Like I think it was Yumiko and TH as like the duo in China of like practicing together. Um, but yeah, Yumiko, super good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That was the Do introduction. Have... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, the, that was the introduction. Yeah, I was going to ask though, do you like... Um, what do you like do you watch streams because like you know we want to talk about like production of streams but like mm -hmm. do you watch other streams because after watching back to warcraft i have a hard time just watching like anybody else stream warcraft 3 if they don't have similar production wow that's um, like no one <laughs> except maybe with, france which, tv or something yeah Fr french tv like they they kind of like have like a similar thing well it's very similar um but uh and it's weird because for a long time we used to watch the game without any overlay without any zoom and uh i used to be able to like carson can still watch a warcraft 3 game without like any overlay but i'm getting to the point now where it's like i can it's unwatchable i can't do it i can't i need to know did he did he skill fan and knives or blink like i need to know and uh what do you what do you think about uh, watching other streams outside of Back to Warcraft? Yeah, I rarely do. Uh, I should probably watch it a lot more because that would teach me a lot about the game, obviously. But I don't know. I don't find many streams appealing, if especially when it's first person, uh, because I kind of miss the total overview to have like uh, the all-seeing eye. It, there's always something missing. Um, I mean, of course, you have to be a little educated to know what's going on. I, no, I don't watch too many streams. Uh, if there's a tag team, I watch it. If there's Dust League, I watch it from time to time. Or France versus the World. I watched the shit out of France versus the World last year because I didn't understand a word, but the casters were so, so just crazy. Especially my man Dahaha or Dahahahahaha. I, I don't know how many hahas are in that name, but he's a freaking genius. Kind of comparable to what uh, O Gaming does in StarCraft. They just go nuts. And then, of course, Kraft was winning the entire thing, and there was Champagne and the uh, French national, national Anthem on stream and stuff. That was super fun. And they look at production a lot. Like, their stream is pretty clean. Their in-game is almost on our level now i want to say they have like three coders on it or something which is kind of crazy uh so yeah shout out to frenchcraft to do a wonderful wonderful job i don't think anybody really can mess with them 
Did you did you start that? And was it StarCraft Two with their in-game overlay that like made you go, oh well, we can make this for Warcraft Three because Back to Warcraft's production is incredible. Oh, dude, um, there all, was this. The, there yeah. was a, a thread on Reddit that caught my eye. Uh, I'm gonna show it now. Sorry for the post podcast version but you find it is called uh, when back to warcraft production peaked that was i think this saturday and it was an old picture of mr neo himself and the very first top 100 stream we did so yeah that's there was still four by three i don't know why we didn't stream in 16 by nine i know the game was four by three obviously but I don't know why we didn't stream in 16 by 9. Was that the early days of Twitch and live stream TV and stuff? I don't really Yeah, remember. that might have been. I think uh well, I, I think 1920 by 1080 came way later. Damn. Um I think it was only 720p ended up being a new thing too. I think it was only 480 that was like the max at the time. Oh man. Yeah, that was crazy times. But even then like we had a design uh made by Marco, so it wasn't just a camera and then nothing. Which I always found important. Like, if a, if a person tunes in, he needs to know what I'm doing here. Why should someone watch me? What kind of tournament is this? Uh, what's coming up? What already happened, maybe? And then, of course, it's kind of important to have links somewhere so people get a not really a call to action, but a view to action or whatever to to like and stuff. Um, so we kind of started with that, yeah, and then. Yeah, of course, I watched a couple of Star, uh, bit of StarCraft and all the other esports video streams. And what Warcraft didn't have for years was a video stream. Of course, we came later. We had audio streams. But nobody had the scoreboard or the score on stream. Like, how can you not have a score on stream? Like, if you watch a little bit of n normal sports, not esports... Of course, there's the score. Of course, there's the teams. Of course, there's... Okay, not... Of course, there's the colors, but... Yeah, there should be the colors. So, we made a design... Or I hacked, quote-unquote, a StarCraft scoreboard called... I forgot. And made a Warcraft version. And it looked kind of like this. And that was the early... That was the earliest Back to Warcraft overlay, I think. Colors. Oh wow! You even have the PayPal like email because there <laughs> yeah, wasn't even of a course. there wasn't even a donate button back in the day. No, wow. no, no, there wasn't. There wasn't. Uh, so it was just the PayPal address, and yeah, it had the player name, the color, the race, uh, resource of one player only, of course, and the tournament and the round. That's how it started back at W three Arena and, days. And Nomad Isles, which was a nightmare. It was amazing, dude. The red spots were a little crook, but the rest was great people wow. still yeah, shit I on nomad that. isles i love nomad isles i don't even know what my production would be like if i wasn't on back to warcraft right now but i i imagine it would be horrible but joining back to warcraft with dust league in season three i think just changed everything i sent you a screenshot of what like the overlay used to look like but that's already <laughs> so... that, that's no, no, no that's pretty good that's already wow your stash though um <laughs> yeah so what you see here is already more than what you see on streams even nowadays, I think, because it has uh, A, the camera, which you can't really improve, but at least, like, branding, your name, the Twitter logo, a bracket, and leak. Like, what am I watching? It says it here. What am I watching? What happened already? What's coming up next? You have all the answers right here because there's a bracket. Easy as that. Yeah, in season one. Yeah, I guess I guess so. But I look at it now and it's completely cringe because um, there's no score like OC beat KO. But like, what was the score? I couldn't fit the numbers in because it would just look way too scuffed. So like there was a lot of limitations. Yeah, that, um, that still bothers me, though, when I let's say I cast an ESL cup and I didn't catch the game or didn't join the game because I was busy with uh, like game three of the quarterfinal, but the first semifinal has already started, so I have to go for a restream. Of course, we have booster now. Thanks, Pat. Uh, so we do get at least player names, colors, uh, and stuff, but we don't have a score. Nobody puts in the score, and it's so easy. It's literally add source text done. Yeah. I, I mean, War 3 Booster has a scoreboard too, though. 
So like, there's no reason. Like, I, I oh, hate yeah. joining, and it's like two one, and it says zero zero, and the fucking guy just didn't bother to change the score, and I have to go like, what's the score? And they're like two one. I'm like, well, fucking type, click twice, <laughs> click three times, you idiot. <laughs> click two one. It's th- 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 what do you mean? Yeah, like, that, that then, bothers like, me. Oh, so annoying. And, like, we're so spoiled now, though. Like, we honestly are. Like, I can't even watch. Like Hitman streams and Cruncher streams, but they stream without War 3 Booster on because it lags their mouse. Um, so like I get so triggered when it's like he's playing an undead. I'm like, who is he playing? Like, I want to know who he's playing. And like, I totally understand when people in the chat are like, who is it? And I get annoyed. I'm yeah. like, dude, just stop asking. Just try to enjoy the games. But I also like, I'm like, I also don't know who it is. And I want to know. Yeah, I can totally so understand spoiled. if you don't want to use photoshop and make designs yourself etc etc but it's already easy if it makes the mouse lag yeah that is of course an issue in i guess tournaments is it an issue on ladder not sure are there ways around it let us know people if you have a solution for that hit us up let us know maybe you can make the warcraft 3 streaming world a little better yeah i just i i really don't see how anyone could be a to and watch back to Warcraft, which everyone does and not say well this is the new standard um you oh, know like speaking of that... new, speaking of new standards uh i was skipping through some vod's to prepare for this topic here today and i remembered we had a production tab in what was that uh 2016 so five years ago we had a production tab and what we did well what i did was uh i went to a forum or like a board that is that that was a thing back then it's not only reddit there were boards of uh like hacks for games because i saw this overlay at dota it was called dream dota 3 or so or dream dota 2 and i asked for that hack because they did it for dota so that it must be working for warcraft somehow and then i stole that dream dota tool i even paid for a hack man this is this is all access podcast, you know. I paid for the Dream Dota hack for uh, the production value. What was? What did they have that you took from oh, that? Look at this! Look at this beauty here. There was. Wait, I can. Oh, it was wow. basically a yeah, production that's... tab. Oh, that's that's dank. Yeah, in the top left, that's it, cool. And they had hotkeys for this as well, so you can flip. There was an APM board in as well, some stats. I have no idea how they did this. I think it's the way uh, Booster does it till now. So they basically hacked the game, while our tool doesn't hack the game. Um, but yeah, that was as early as I as. Oh, look at this. There's HP numbers and mana numbers on the tool as well. I forgot about that. Oh, wow. 525, 188. That's crazy. So you can exactly see, like, does he have a coil? Does he not have a coil without clicking on the hero and stuff? That was pretty sick back then. They had some cool Damn. tools, but at some point it didn't work anymore because someone thought it's nice to implement anti-cheat measures in Warcraft 3, and then, yeah, it didn't work anymore. Yeah, for people that don't have the visual, it was basically just, like, the similar production ch- tab in the top left that you'd see in StarCraft 2. This was the Gera Cup that uh, Neo was showing. And then basically for HP and mana that you normally see on the overlays now, it was right over top of the hero's head. So the panda had like 188 mana underneath of like 700 HP. Pretty cool, man. And I bet you at that time that was like amazing. Oh, but like yeah. if you did that now, people would be like, what are you doing? This looks awful. <laughs> Meanwhile, that was the standard five years ago where that was good you know it's crazy how production could change oh i remember we went to wca i think it was 2015 so we had it 2015 we went to wca and obviously we wanted to use it um but they introduced this new server called netties that we might now be familiar with uh but back in the day it was kind of new to us it was i think the start of netties and everybody was raving about like oh they're playing on zero ping essentially okay and then it was i think the quarterfinal or like some important game that was also be played on the stage and we were supposed to join the game and we joined the game, was about to start, production was ready, stream was ready, stage was ready and the game starts and it crashed. You're like, oh, okay, maybe this server isn't so good, right? Maybe the internet uh, connection here isn't too great. Maybe your bug occurred. So we tried it again, load into the game, everything crashes. Like, dude, what the hell? Everything was working until we joined. 
Is it us? And then it was our tool crashing the entire game, holding up this tournament for like 45 minutes until someone figured out that it was us. Uh, and then, yeah, we had to get rid of that tool, unfortunately. Oh, man. So you actually casted regular, like, no overlay because you had to? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. But uh, I think awkward. we had, like, the borders and player colors and stuff. Damn. Yeah, yeah I, I just don't see how anyone can, like like I said, like stream nowadays and try to like make Warcraft 3 content without it. Like um, like you see Todd in the, the, the 4v4 and stuff like that. He's got at least like a 4v4 overlay or like a 2v2 overlay. Um, so like everything, you just need it now. Like you can't not have those visuals. And like it's something as simple as like changing the score. Like it's just like you need it now. Like yeah, people so need to be able to tune in and know exactly what's going on. If you join a stream... What do you need to know? I Okay, first of all, what I like to do is I like to join the stream and see what the match is being played. So if I see, you know, Foggy happy, then I know right away that we're probably in the finals of the semis, right? So then I need to know the score. So it's one nothing. Okay, now I'm good. What map is this TS? Done. And then I want to see, obviously, you need the interface. You need hero levels. You need production. I need to see both of their resources and both of their supplies at the same time like that just shows how spoiled we are and then of course if you have the production in the corners that's a bonus too um but uh, uh, hero abilities i need to know like if he's level three did he choose what ability did he choose or at level two what ability did he choose and like for a mountain king that's bash or clap for a warden that's blink or fan um there's just so many things that I need to know. Like sometimes a TC will go shockwave and you don't know that until later because he's skilled uh, aura first and then level two he gets shockwave and he's playing night elf and you don't know this. Um, so I think, and plus shadow hunter, like shadow hunter can do hex, heal or wards. So it depends how the player wants to play. Like not having that takes away from my viewing experience and I imagine everyone else too. And like I said, we are spoiled because back in the day we didn't have that and work through watching was totally fine. Um, yeah, but, but it's just like we are conditioned now. As I did the research, we introduced resources for both players in 2017. So pretty much exactly four years ago. And as, as, as we also said, it's not that hard to do. So people should use it, must use it now. If you take it somewhat seriously, even if it's not your job, even if you don't make too much money, if you want to have viewers, you kind of need to have that. Um, so I think with Booster, the standard is pretty high if everybody sets it up correctly. But outside of the game, I think there's a lot of room to explore um, for streamers and casters. Because I want to know, what is this tournament? What happened before? What's up next and when? So I definitely Ooh. need... Uh, like who's this caster maybe even so a name of that would be nice even though it, it is on twitch obviously but having it on the screen doesn't hurt and then a couple of results which is not too easy but i mean if you look at china they put it in a notepad and screen grab the notepad that's oh, um, really yeah for years they all do oh. it in feed dad they all do it it looks kind of cheap but at least they have the information like that's the yeah. bare minimum i think what you should do i think the worst this is the worst thing for me is when you turn onto a stream and there's a little bit of downtime because obviously tos don't coordinate to try to mitigate downtime so there's like 12 15 minutes of waiting before the game and it's just a blank <laughs> overlay that shows the league's icon and like match starting soon and you're like what match oh, yeah. and what happened before <laughs> And where are we? But you'll like for some reason people streamers think it's okay to just have a viewer tune in for twelve minutes, not even knowing who's playing or what's gonna happen. Yeah. Like that's why, like what the match that happened before, show that score. Coming up next, show that. Show what happened. Like semifinals, two one for this guy. We're going into the grand finals next. This guy versus this guy. Yeah, zero, essentially. Zero. You know what I mean? Like what you as a streamer are are saying to your audience is Okay, I could take the time to put it somewhere on my stream, but I'm a little bit too lazy for that. So you have a link in the chat if you want to. You can click on it. You can go to Liquipedia. You can look it all up. So my time is worth more than your time. And it's also, dude, what bothers me is the people that like run a good tournament, but the production is so shit and they're because <laughs> they're lazy. And then they go, where's my viewers? 
how come I only got 20 viewers? Like this guy's getting a hundred, this guy's getting 200 for his thing. I have a good event, which you do, but the production is what gets you viewership, man. If dust league had no overlay, no way to show viewers what's going on or anything, we would plummet. Like it's because you have all these assets that someone could tune in one hour, like into the thing and no, take a 15 minute break, go make dinner, come back. And they're going to know, oh, we're in the grand finals now. It's one nothing. And, and we're right in to uh, Torrena stand. Like, that's what you need. Like, th so many times I tune into a tournament that I want to watch. And it's just a waiting screen with no information on it. And I don't feel like sitting seven minutes, five minutes to see what's up. I don't care that much. I'm going to tune out. And I think that's the, big, the biggest issue. You need to make it as visually appealing to the... If, you need to dumb it down. You need to literally say, this is on next. This just finished. Yeah. You have to inform people about what's being played. And it, it bothers me so fucking much when people are like, oh, I didn't get, I got bad viewership. It's like your production shit. You deserve no view. I tuned out. I stopped watching. Yeah. I mean, know? we're. We're not saying before you stream for the first time, everything need to be sorted out. You need the cleanest design. You need a CI for the rest of your life. You need to invest into coders that do this for you or learn Photoshop for it. The bare minimum can be done with background images and the text tool of OBS. Or like yep. uh, countdowns can be done with tools like SNAS. All you have to do is countdown, Twitch, tool... And then you find it. But uh, yeah, I think that's... The, the bare minimum for me would I think be a starting screen to when the show starts. Then like a talking scene with what happened and what will happen next. Uh, In-game, of course, with booster should be fine. And maybe you put your logo in the bottom right. And a break screen with a countdown to when is the show continuing after best of three. And what's next that's the minute yep all with visual direction of what's coming next and, and what's to be expected that's yeah. perfect and that's that could all be done in paint and yep. obs is a pretty good form like the like you said the text tool <laughs> you can make an image you can have a graphic and this this shouldn't cost you any money you can literally rip a graphic from anywhere make it your colors and have like you could even have like a black screen but have like the, the the stuff there um you know i just think like some people are so lazy and they literally just have an out of game graphic that shows nothing which is literally the, sometimes the graphic that they use to advertise the tournament and that's just the banner for like out of game and that they're like can what? look that's... cool yeah, yeah if yeah, it's a cool, so cool if it's if it's a cool banner it can look cool but there's no direction. There's no coming next. There's it's just starting soon or next match soon. And you're like, what match? Yeah, when? Be nice. But you know? you know, and, and like you said, a timer is not. I used to have a timer. I have my own timer program that I uh, used outside of Backdoorcast program. Snaz? It's not hard to implement a timer. Snaz? Uh, I use. Um, I'm using Snaz. I use Stream Counter. Ah, that sounds like it does the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's basically you open it up and it says the time and then a message when the timer's done. Yeah, it's it puts very it into simple. The text file. Yeah. Um, yeah. What also triggers me is if people do nothing for production, like have just the screen grab Warcraft, no camera, shitty mic. Oh my God. I hate shitty mics so freaking much. And I would love my mic to like clip now or something to make a point. But. Shitty mics when there's so much distortion and you hear every keystroke and stuff that like I immediately tune out. I'm not here to listen to your noise. I'm here to listen to your voice. So get a proper mic when you stream. That would be great. And people, I think uh, maybe less in Warcraft, more in general, before they think of anything that increases the production value for the viewer, they set up alerts for sub alerts and donation alerts because that's the most important. Yeah, that's not that should not be the most important. Also, like you said, you can have a shitty mic. You don't have to spend seven hundred dollars on an SM7B like this bad boy right here. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> um, do a sound day. check. Do a sound check, man. Are your levels peaking into the red? Are you clipping like crazy before the show? Take fifteen minutes. Like I, I do. An hour before every show, I do sound check. I check everything. Everything's working. I don't want to fuck up. Take some pride in your work. Hello? 
Like, you I know, like that. take some pride in your work. And it, it, <laughs> we're not saying that you need to go buy an SM7B. <laughs> what did you say? I don't do that. Oh, well, yeah, but your production's bang. Because, because you know, it's clockwork for you. It's clockwork. Like, it's just go, go, go. You don't even have to worry about it. You've done it so many times. But, um, and also, nobody's production will be worse than Remo Demos. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Like you could fuck up completely, but it will, it will never be as worse as Rebo. <laughs> I know. I still don't know how Rebo just. I don't know, but whatever. Doesn't we love care. You, Rebo. But yeah. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he obviously just doesn't give a shit. But uh, Rebo, we love you. Um, but yeah, just do a sound check, man. And if your levels are peaking, turn your mic down. If you have mic boost on, like third thirty dB, and everything's just like, <laughs> like turn that shit down, man. Realize what's going on. Maybe listen to a vod as well. You know, oh, yeah. week one, listen to it. Does it sound like shit? Edit it from there. Um, but so many people just turn on the stream and they just go, well, I'm in the happy foggy game. Where's my 1500 viewers and 200 <laughs> gifted subs and 3000 donations? Where's my money? And it's like, dude, you have to put on a good show. It takes time. The money comes last. Don't worry about trying to get rich and famous at the beginning. Try to focus on putting on a good show and everything else will come. Yeah, for sure. I think that is uh, pretty much the case for War 3 History. Side is having a lot of information on his stream and, of course, a super smooth voice and great insights. He has a lot of viewers when he streams uh, cups that we don't, for example. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much it for, like, the basics of production, I think. Like, you don't need an HD camera. You don't necessarily even need a 1080p stream. 720p is, I think, enough. And yeah, then just go. Yeah, and 720p is not very hard on your computer, I think. I was streaming at 720 with like a really bad computer uh, before I upgraded my stuff. But um, yeah, the basics aren't... I, I would say like you could put on a good show without spending any money if you're super cheap. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're like, because I, I used to be super cheap when I was broke. And I, I would put on these shows and it, like I said, Microsoft Paint is your friend. Um, or Gimp. The stream, Streamlabs Assets is your friends. You can definitely, definitely put on a good show. But, you know, production is one thing, but casting as well. What do you think about some of the people that do like community casting? Because I think there's so much room, Dude. so much more room for more casters. What do you, what do you think about just other people that, that you've noticed? Ember is so good. He needs a bigger platform and a lot of help with stream production and probably a new PC. But Ember is really good. I love listening to Ember. But that's also the thing. I don't really know when they are streaming. Do they have a fixed schedule? Do they pick their skill silver cups when we can't do it? Um, I don't really know. Oh, that's a really good point too. Schedulability. Oh my God, we're, we're banging some good things here. Like, I think there's a lot of good GNL casters. That, that cast the GNL, but it's so up and down. It's on a Monday one week. It's on a Friday the other week. Have maybe like a consistent date that people can rely on. Like Tuesday, Wednesday, ESL Meistershaft. Monday, ESL Cup. Thursday, uh, Theorycraft. Um, Dust League is Saturday, Sunday. It used to be Friday, Saturday. People know what to expect. They just need to know, is the league on right now? Okay, then I know that the Saturday, Sunday or the next Saturday, Sunday is going to be this or that. And um, I feel like consistency is so big. Like, like you said, Ember's a good caster, but when does he cast? When yeah. can I see him? Is it consistent or is it once a month, once a year? Um, maybe like start, start projects that are consistent and try to make them, first of all, not conflict with everyone else's busy schedule, <laughs> which is easier said than done. There's a lot of fucking Warcraft 3 going on right now. And it's hard for us to even schedule around ourselves. Uh, I found myself turning away projects because i just don't have time like i can't fit you in i don't have time yeah. um but uh, definitely try to try to make something there's definitely some open days where you can absolutely fit in a product and then just keep it consistent because like i said i think there's tons of room for more casters and more duos and more personalities in warcraft 3 um in case if, if you guys are getting sick of us um the door is open <laughs> Probably, us, you know, yeah, yeah. Us, yeah. <laughs> I say us, us, but I mean me. Um, yeah, yeah, there's definitely room for that. And I think people are discouraged. Maybe they aren't, but I feel like they are. They're discouraged because, you know, well, back to Warcraft's got the cake and Carson and, and Bidu have it made. And, you know, I, I like casting. Like, I liked Ark and Grom. I thought that was a great duo. Ember, like you said, Baron's been doing some casting. Monk and, and uh, Paz. Paz and Qbert and uh, Kaiser and Sithrin. All these guys are, they bring a different dynamic to, to casting. And that's fine. Have your own thing, but definitely keep rolling with it if you're enjoying it. There's, there's, there's a lot of room here 
for for new uh personalities in the scene 100 we encourage that we don't want to discourage that i think uh we want to see more projects open up i i, I don't want to speak for you but you know the door is always open on our side i heard that hippo did a banger job casting with todd and the tag team oh he's got a Sunday. gorgeous voice a gorgeous voice you ever heard him i he's like super he's like british and he's like a beautiful voice <laughs> Oh, uh, he sent me the link. I had no time yet, but uh, I will definitely check it out. It's on Todd's channel, I think. I think UK casters or like, yeah, like UK, that accent or like Australia, oh, yeah. like that kind of accent will mm. always rule casting yeah. because you just listen to it and you're like, I want to fuck that guy. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, I like, I like that. That turns me on. It's a, it's, it's sexual napalm in a voice, man. Like it turns people on. Oh, I'm I have not going to lie. I have that with the main art in SC2. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. It's so good. It's just like pig too, man. Like that accent is just, it's game over. Like it's just game over. Oh man. All UK streamer uh, casters, you could you could take over the game. You just don't even know it yet. Exactly. They speak. also say so many cool things. Of course, it's their native language, so it's a little easier compared to to what we do here. The simple German mind. They have so many cool th uh, sayings that that we clearly don't have ready in a hectic fight. For example, there is definitely room. So I want to hear more hippos. I want to hear more cubers. I want to hear I don't know say so Saron. Who else is in NZ? Get your streams up, everybody. Send, send, send me your best streams. Maybe we can ask the community. What's your favorite community streamer? Yeah, I think also just step up, man. Like if you guys want to be, if you guys enjoy it, not saying like you, need, you guys need to quit your job and be full-time caster. That's not what <laughs> we're saying. But if you guys enjoy it, there's there's lots of room, man. And um, yeah, step up. And, and if you want it, you want it and come get it, man. Because like... Uh, Maybe there's some we, hidden gems. We want more that we don't yeah and, and and i don't want them to feel discouraged i want them to feel like you know i want this too can i join in on the boat there's lots of room on this boat so um i just want to see the work being done i want to see i want to see someone genuinely start a project be consistent with it have a, their own thing that you like i honestly want to see like competition too yeah. like i'd love a rival dust league like an actual good league or like the what about GNL, league? that's it yeah, that Wash Up League is great, but it's too big. Like it's too scattered, and everyone just makes their own schedule. I don't think you can really make that a consistent thing unless you just say Saturdays we're casting this, and then whoever schedules on that Saturday, that's who you put. That's who you put. But when you have like 115 players, it's really hard to make like a consistent uh, league um, with production. But you know, I, I like GNL is is a is a made made product. It's really good. A lot of people are into it. I'm super into it. Um, the more that I get to know these players too, like these people that I are on my team or just vice versa, the more invested I am into watching them. And, you know, you put a little bit of production there, a little bit of consistency with a good, a good voice. You guys got a, yourselves a product there. You don't even know it. Yeah, it could um, be a good, uh, breeding ground, uh, for not only good players, but also good casters, GNL, make it like a GNL Sunday or, or super Sunday or whatever. And you have four four matches coming up. You, you did that on a Thursday, I think once on our channel with like four. Yeah, games. And you know what I did? You know that what I did? I talked fun. to Baron. I talked to Baron and I said, I have room on Thursday. Let's get this guy, this guy and this guy. And we actually tried to schedule everything to that day. So it's not hard, but you do have to put in the effort. Like if you want to make it on Saturdays only as GNL day or Sundays only as GNL day, then schedule around that. You have four banger matchups. Get those people to play on Sunday because that's when you stream. And then also put in the work for production. Get good casters. GNL would be the perfect place I think to so test too. out new casters. Like if you want to try it out, you don't even have to. You don't have to be good. Just try it. If it's your first time and you're like, you know what, I've always wanted to hop on a community stream like that. That would be perfect. Think you so know, too. that'd be that'd, that'd be great. But definitely put in the work and don't just don't just say, oh, we have a great matchup here. So where's my viewership? And then you only have a <laughs> Warcraft three game screen and nothing else like actually make it visually appealing. And we've touched on so many points today that if you're a, an actual T.O. or a streamer or a caster, if you're not doing any of this right now, shame on you. And uh, <laughs> oh, I hope I hope I hope you're. I hope your stream dies. <laughs> oh my god, dude! What the fuck? No, let let people stream if it, if it's gonna be low effort. If it's just like for them, um, I think some some people don't really care, and then it's fine as well if they just want to do it for them to 
release a little steam while talking. Like, I don't know, if, if, if you get frustrated, it can be entertaining as well. And if you say, I do this, I don't know, whenever I want, uh, have a little bit of interaction, I don't really care about more, then have them have fun with it, then that's not necessary. But if you, have, if you want more of this, if you want more viewers, then I think we had a couple of good uh, tips here. And okay, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa Neo here. Okay, Neo, I'm going to find you a shit Yeah, what do you want? But no then all the streamers just stop streaming and we got nothing left except us? No, I mean, people can uh, stream for fun. We're not talking about those people. We're talking about the people that actually want to make a go of it. But you know what, Mother Teresa Neo, nice guy Neo, I'm going to send you a link to a shit stream and I'm going to quiz you. <laughs> on the whole thing and you better fucking watch the whole thing because no! it, you're so supportive of I'm this too shit. Busy. Why don't you watch, I, I'm too busy why for don't homework. You watch, watch one of these shitty streams, Neo, because it's all good. No, I want to have you sit there for an hour and a half and watch just an absolute shit show of production. I'm going to quiz but you. Why, what happened why, on the 45th minute? I, I would just tune out of it. Like, why? I would shut it off. Exactly. But Don't be that stream, guys. <laughs> Put some work in. Have a good product, okay? It's not all fun and games. Neo's wrong. Thank I have you. to cast Thank myself you. now, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, we have questions. <laughs> Shit. Uh, we've got Q&A. <coughs> oh. uh, sorry about that. We got more questions from the Patreon, Ricky. Where can people sign up for the Patreon? We should talk more about the Patreon. Yeah, we absolutely should. Um, for YouTube, you could probably just put it right on the screen, right? But... Um... <laughs> Yeah. It's patreon.com slash back to Warcraft. My incompetent co-caster can't really explain it to you right now. There's six I was opening tiers. the question. I was opening the question. Yeah, no, no, no. There's a little cliffhanger to the questions right now. We plug the Patreon first. Um, six different tiers from two euro to uh, 50 is available. As the big 500 goat is already gone. Thank you, Knubba Quakes. So uh, you get access to some Discord channels where we answer pretty much everything and be of help for you guys. You get access to this wonderful podcast one week early via Acast and be part of our weekly Q&As that we do on the Patreon and in the private Discord channels. You also get music and movie recommendations, everybody, and you'll be prioritized by these Q&A uh, questions. We got custom game evenings. We got replay analysis, private coaching, Back to Warcraft uh, chat VIP badges and so much more. Go check it out. It's a great support for the channel. And now Q and A, everybody. Uh, we did already talk about our favorite vegetable last week. In depth. In depth. <laughs> you went. You went with the broccoli, and I went with the Brussels sprouts. Exactly. I still have to uh, try your recipe. So, mm -hmm. and Padrid asks, do you guys have nine to five jobs or did you manage to make Back to Warcraft your full-time job? And uh, I'm full-time for one year and two months now. That's great. Yeah, uh, Neo does, th this is what he does. This is what he wakes up and does. Uh, for, unfortunately for me, I don't have the luxury of working from home. I, uh, I have a full-time job, a career, in fact, that we're going to steal plant. Uh, so I, my days are pretty busy. I don't work nine to five though. It's 12 hour continental shifts. So, um, 12 hour days and then they switch from nights, but I'm pretty busy for the most part. I work a lot of hours as well. Um, but the schedule with continentals, you know what your schedule is for the whole year. So that allows me to have my schedule open. So like I can schedule dust league around this weekend that I have off. So Basically, the time that I have off is dedicated to Back to Warcraft, which is cool um, that I have this job that actually fits around the casting schedule. Because this year, I did want to make a big go of casting um, and just being way more involved with Back to Warcraft. But is it my full-time job? No. Do I put in full-time hours? <laughs> Some weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, but uh, no, I do have my own career. I remember these days, man, when I was still working this shitty cinema job. Uh, I don't miss that at all. Nine hours at the at the customer support and then ten hours of streaming. Those were fun. It was grind, grind getting to to this spot. But uh, uh, grateful every day that I don't have the nine to five job anymore and do this right now. From the Discord, uh, this is a question for you. I think will Weezer ever again make an album like Pinkerton? 
Okay, so I don't know what I know what Weezer is. I don't know what Pinkerton is. I thought this question was for you. Uh, maybe it's for Carson because Carson's like a music guy. Do you know? I don't know what Pinkerton is. It definitely is uh, a question for me. Uh, I think it's by Sean, who uh, I'm in talks with quite frequently via Twitter over music. And Pinkerton is a legendary album by Weezer. It's one of their early works. It's also my favorite work of theirs. It is the emo album. It's from 1969. 69? No, 96. That would be... Uh, that was different. 1996. And it's uh, Weezer's emo album, I think. It's uh, very dark. It's, I think, also from a dark place in the singer's life. And I don't think they have the magic to, re to recreate that. I think they're in a very different spot in their lives. Their band is obviously a lot more successful. And uh, Rivers Cuomo found a good way of handling... Uh, music, creativity, and the business side of things. So he's living a decent life and is having fun with that. So I don't think he will be in a state of mind to recreate the magic of this album, which oftentimes goes hand in hand when artists become more successful. They they don't uh, yeah, they they lose their connection to to where they're coming from. They lose that feel, you know, the feel, the emotions that made their music yeah. so good. That's why some some artists like their starting albums are always their best sometimes. Yeah, because that's when so they too. get the most of them. And then when they get to make the money, they're just putting out content and put out music and just to keep the lights on. But yeah, it's interesting that they did an emo album. I didn't know that. I didn't even know that Weezer like would do something like that because their music now is kind of like upbeat and like. But sometimes they do have that depression. Like say it ain't so. That's a good song. Oh yeah. Um, and that's kind of dark. Ish. Yeah, <laughs> I like Weezer. Weezer is good, man. Weezer is really good. Um, yeah, so if you don't like what we do, then you can change us with money. Subs <laughs> to our Patreon. Make us rich and change who we are. Uh, I'll change for money, 100%. <laughs> of you, course, give me, you would give do me money, I'll change. I'll do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you once mentioned the two and two overlays in the works. Any updates on this? Yes, I can tell you updates on this as it's technically working. So we can display all the information on the stream. We just don't know how. So Carson is currently sitting on the drawing board, is making um, a design for the two and two, and then we're going to have a two and two overlay. It's close. That's Very the podcast cool. for this. And week. it'll look it'll look similar to the 1v1s. Like you'll have the heroes and the production and whatever all four fits. people's that's cool that's cool yeah. i liked what todd was doing too it was kind of not as visual as the back to warcraft one but you at least got the supplies and the general gist yep. and as long as the observing is okay i mean it's still going to be uh good yep. and people should understand like 2v2 4v4 3v3 it gets harder to display all this shit on a yep. small screen so um if people are open to that we are in the works to make it uh as as good for you as possible so ricky i got a show I in really, 10 minutes <laughs> I yeah no no I yeah I know we got to wrap this up. I I really look forward to maybe having more two v two stuff um going going on as well. But uh, yeah, I think we should definitely wrap up. I think we covered uh, we covered all the the points we wanted to. Some really good points if you're a streamer or a, or a caster or just any to and in production. Um, looking forward to the ESL cups. Obviously, DreamHack is right around the corner, guys. It's Tuesday, April thirteenth. But DreamHack. We'll be right here next week with qualifiers, so stay tuned for that. And Neo is literally about to jump into ESL Meisterschaft in 20 minutes. Um, so good luck with that, man. Have a good show. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.